Good morning, church. Welcome to the second day of our month of prayer here in March. And this morning, we are going to be praying for the conflict in the Ukraine. Uh, just to help us through our prayers through the day, we're going to use Psalm 46 as the template for our prayer to help us shape what we pray and how we pray. We're praying, first of all, verse one tells us this, that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in times of trouble. And I want us to pray that the people of Ukraine will feel the presence of God in this time of trouble, that there will be an upsurge in people finding Jesus in this nation and also in Russia as well as they're feeling the pressure in that country. Verses two and three read like this. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We are praying for supernatural peace. A peace that, as we know, the Bible says, passes all understanding. Both for the people in the Ukraine and for those protesting the conflict in Russia, even in doing that, there is a risk to life and a risk to livelihood. We're praying for them that they will not fear. Verses four and five lead on that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. So we choose to prophesy the presence and the help of God over the cities and towns of Ukraine for food, for finance, for medicines, and for protective equipment, that there is an abundance of supply at this time of difficulty. Verses six to eight, read this. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lift his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. We're praying this, that the Lord uses this for good, to reach people who don't know him, systems of politics that don't acknowledge him, and men in power that do not recognize him that the Lord uses this for good. But we're praying as well from these verses that as refugees flee, people are housed, fed, and clothed. That our friends in Poland who are serving and helping this way have all the help and strength and finance that they need. But we're also praying for the decision makers in the Ukraine and Russia, decision makers around the world that in all of this, there is an encounter with the Prince of Peace, that he transforms lives, and in transforms lives, transforms nations. Verse 9 tells us what he does. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the ball and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And we pray for this, an end to conflict, for peace to break out, and a return of the Russian military to its own borders. We pray for forgiveness to flow, and that those mourning lost loved ones find both peace and they find comfort. We finish praying from verses 10 to 11, where the word says simply, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And that is our prayer, that God will be lifted up, exalted in the earth. We're praying for stories of supernatural protection, supernatural intervention, and supernatural deliverance, both for individuals and for nations, that people will proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of this crisis. We're praying and believing for God to move miraculously. Join us today, 7 a.m. 
7 p.m. as we pray together for the Ukraine.